Many people have always been interested in economics, economics and finance. How much they're going to earn on the stock market, how much they're going to lose in the stock market crash, what will happen with their paychecks, their debts, the interest rates they pay. In short, the world revolves around the economic and financial issues. Well, no one believes that economics is the only thing that rules the roost, or that finance does. The economy and finance are already a result of something prior, specifically the mentality, values, philosophy of life, the psychology of a people. And it's Dr. Kepi, the scientist and psychoanalyst, who created the science of psychosociopathology, who's verified that there's a relationship between the illness inside the human being and social sickness. He's been doing this for 20, 30, 40 years, and even more than that in his work as a psychoanalyst. Kepi shows how the inversion of values, the lack of ethics, and out-of-control emotions creates an unbalanced economic work and tax system, as well as outrageously out-of-balance work laws that created social pathology. Meaning, the pathology of the law combined with individual human pathology. When Kepi began his work in the United States, he was more a psychoanalyst than a sociopathologist. When he arrived there, he studied the illness of the social structure and wrote an extremely important book called The Decay of the American People and the United States. This book was also published in Portuguese. A Decadência do Povo Americano e dos Estados Unidos. At that time, about 1984-85, the United States was at a crescent. It was the time of Reaganomics, the yuppies, and everybody getting rich overnight. Nobody wanted to hear about the warnings that kept be voiced. Today, everybody is waking up to the problem that no longer has a solution. Dr. Kepi? We published this newspaper there in February 1985. This one has the cover of the book we launched there in the United States. This here, do you see it? Yes, Fight Against American Decay. And how people see this word decay, how they are afraid of it. For example, for those reading this there in the United States, as a CIA agent once told me, that this gives the idea that we were promoting the decay of the country. <laughs> so I said to him, of course that's not the idea, it's the opposite. When we attend a person in analysis, we show him his decay. That is, show him the problems he has. Because if he corrects those errors, then he experiences healing from the sickness he has, from his problems. So publishing this book, the politicians in particular began to notice that the economic sector was destroyed destroying American politics, destroying the American philosophy of life, destroying work, etc. If the people had perceived this, they could have corrected the problem and the country would have recovered the splendor it had attained in the past. But from 1980 on, the speculation brought in by Reagan became all the rage in the nation, and this orientation became known as Reaganomics. This process was based on the work of two well-known American economists, the Freedmans, the Freedman couple. Let's see. They won the Nobel Prize. Yes, they even won the Nobel Prize. <laughs> I'd like to show you a slide that clarifies this. Wall Street or the false economy. First, Wall Street didn't actually crash because it never had any real wealth. Exactly. Wall Street is based on gambling, a type of gambling with stocks. For example, a company would be worth 100,000. 
but it would be put on the stock market for the value of 300,000. It's something completely false, you see. Anything above 100,000 wouldn't exist as money. It became a game of hallucinations and deliriums. Like a casino, right? Yes, but more like a mental institution, Claudia. People there started to turn crazy with this type of behavior. And here in Brazil, everybody wanted the same thing as well. Ah, I'm investing on the Bovespa market and I'm going to get rich. But it's not like that. Doing this makes you mentally crazy. Let's see the second one. Well, Wall Street's name, its fame and prestige, were all an empty balloon. It was never real. The people who were there were living in a fantasy world. In fact, I've written a book about this phenomenon. Here it is. It's called Earth, the illusory planet. This economic issue needs to be clarified because money is important. It's important for people to have capital, but not capitalism, which bases everything on the money system instead of the political system. Referring back to the slide, let's see now. The Wall Street crash is beneficial for humanity. The crash will help us avoid an increase in mental illness. The fall of Wall Street will highlight the reality of work in society, and this is the true wealth. We can see that Brazil, for example, lives more on the richness of our natural resources. It's dangerous to create stock markets that then decide the value of our products. For example, why does coffee need to rely on the Chicago Stock Exchange to price it? Why does soya need to go through there? Why do all food, cattle, meat, etc. have to have those people deciding its price value? Instead of Brazil deciding that, instead of the countries with the natural resources trading their products directly. This is the issue, that the coffee arrives there at one price. The Chicago stock market increases the price, and this profit is retained more in those countries that have a stock exchange. Let's have a look at this slide concerning the destruction that stock market provides. First, speculation destroys the value of productive work. This is obvious. A person who speculates doesn't work. I knew a journalist many years ago, and I had said to him one day, Hey man, you don't take work seriously, do you? And he answered, But if I'm going to work, I won't make any money. The person who works doesn't earn money. My work is to make money. Just look at this type of mentality that has inundated humanity. And the second point, let's see. The so-called commodities practically don't exist. I had clients from the United States who in analysis would almost fall off the couch in shock when I revealed how commodities makes people crazy. For example, they set a price for beef in Central America that would be priced at X amount of dollars, three years from now. You see, this is craziness. We don't even know if some years from now these cattle will even be alive or sick or dead. Yet they've already been sold. Let's see the next one now, point number three. The stock market only works with speculation and interest rates. So, the stock market causes disturbances for all countries. Observation. The stock market enriches the rich, but impoverishes the countries. Why does Brazil, which is such a rich country, still have such a large number of people who are so poor? Excluding Sao Paulo and the south of Brazil, which are the wealthiest regions, the rest live at a limited level of wealth. Let's see now a photo where the richness of Brazil is consumed. The Chicago Stock Exchange. This is the stock market where they set the prices of food, meat, 
farm products, the world's food. I'll put up another slide to clarify this about the stock markets. The stock market is an illusion. First, the stock exchange destroys the true economy of a nation. Because it places the actions, the bonds, either at an exorbitantly high price, which is not its real value, or it prices them below their real value. And this destroys the productivity of that particular entrepreneur. And the second point. The stock market creates an unethical mindset in the country. It's clear that this process is a type of stealing from the people, from the nation, of impoverishing the nation, the country, or showing that it has a wealth that in fact it doesn't have. If the United States has a GNP of 14 trillion while owing 14 trillion at the same time, then they actually have nothing. Let's see the third point. The stock market is responsible for creating psychosocial and physical disease and enormous stress. The stock market is responsible for the decay of the people. We see that science has stopped developing. The science from the most important nations that we had in the world has stopped. The most original, contemporaneous writer in the world today, says the National Scientific Research Center in France. A genuine contributor to the intellectual treasury of civilization, says former U.S. Ambassador Joseph Kogassian. For these times of uncertainty and conflict comes a work of extraordinary vision, hope, and moral clarity. Brazilian psychoanalyst and social scientist Norberto Kepi writes with wisdom and authority about the things that really matter. How to heal illness, how inverted science is leading the destruction of nature, and what to do about it. Finding spirituality within, structuring a truly just society. There are more than 3,000 books published worldwide every day. None are more important than these. The books of Norberto Kepi. Trilogical Science, leading us to a new world. Now I'd like to show you how this issue of the stock market is affecting the American spirit. Here's an interview with an American, Bob Butler, and let's see what he has to say about the situation there. I believe that the root of the problem is that our government and even the citizens of the United States, we, we're not perceiving the seriousness of this problem. We, uh, for years, live, quote, the American dream, a dream that, you know, everyone would have a car, a television, a house, and uh, good jobs. Well, the jobs are gone. The cities are decaying. Cities like Detroit, once prominent cities, the fourth largest population leaving, the factories closed, uh, people without jobs, unemployment skyrocketing, and still this obsession to spend money that, that we don't have. Um, the majority of the money that we have is borrowed, and it continues to get worse. And it's a reflection of, you know, the, the rating that just decreased, as well as the fact that the stock market is crashing. This problem of American decadence had already started back in the 80s. It's just that it was not clear to people because there was no consciousness that what was occurring there was an artificial growth. Indeed, isn't it the American civilization that created like Superman, Wonder Woman, Tarzan and all of that, always promoting an idea of explosive success beyond limits of something incredible. But we shouldn't also think that everything is wrong there. Hollywood, for example, is a wonderful thing there in the United States. When uh, Walt Disney created Disneyland, it was a marvelous thing. The original ideal of Walt Disney to construct a model city for the future, even though nowadays it is more economically focused. 
I'd like you now to see who, in 1980, started orienting Ronald Reagan to start changing the socio-economic system. And consider this, they are Nobel Prize winners. Let's see this. It's the couple, Milton and Rose Friedman. The couple that had received Nobel Prize, they wrote a book suggesting that Americans didn't need to work anymore. This is the idea now that humanity in general has, that we don't need to work anymore. But my God, the person who doesn't work doesn't live. This relates to the leisure phase the European sociologists are talking about. Life is work. A person who doesn't want to work doesn't have a life. He might as well set himself up with a little rocking chair near the cemetery and just wait there. You see, I speak in this kind of joking around way in the hopes that some people might wake up. Let's see now this sentence I've got for us. The socio-economic system makes up humanity's greatest delusion. The socio-economic system led humanity away from its primary function, which is good action, quality work. It even looks like an idea directly from the devil himself, you know. The devil doesn't work. He spends his time just tempting others, as the religious people put it. Isn't there, in the story of Faust, the idea of enrichment and eternal youth that the devil yes, would give? Yes, Faust by the famous German romantic Goethe, Wolfgang Goethe. That story gives the idea that the devil provides youth, provides wealth. That's it. Well, it appears at first that he does give these things, but it's not long before he suddenly cuts everything out from under the person, who then finds himself up a creek without a paddle. Now, let's look at the negative effects of the stock market. So, there's the devaluation of currency that each country experiences. For example, the dollar. If there's an acute inflation, it loses its value. The dollar is worth one, and they decide it's worth ten. Ah, this destroys its value. And the value of other currencies, those countries that are tied to the dollar. The price of each currency then falls. And let's see the second point. There is product evaluation in all countries. Do you, our viewers, think the situation with our coffee makes sense? Since childhood, I've seen in the countryside mountains of coffee burning, all the time burning, and I would ask, but why do they do this? So the price of the coffee doesn't fall. They burn mountains of coffee in order to keep the price high. But why not take all this coffee and give it to the people who just can't afford it? This is a sin, isn't it? This is sin. People who destroy food as a way to make themselves as rich as possible. Meat that is worth one, let's say. They price it as though it's worth ten. This is a crime. A person in power must learn that he, he himself, has to work for the people. He has to put himself at the service of the people, instead of he putting the people in service to him. This is fundamental. If humanity doesn't do this, if we don't lose our fear of one another, if we don't want to help others, Ah, just look, we've arrived at Christianity, the teachings of Jesus Christ. Humanity needs to perceive that we need to like each other, to help each other. If we don't, there'll be no way out of this situation. And the next one. The negative effect of the stock market is to decrease the work of those who produce. Since it is fictitious, the money in the stock market destroys the true value of production. Isn't this what's happening now? For example, the issue of usury, exorbitant interest rates. In the Middle Ages or in ancient Judaism, those who would finagle their way into charging interest, the money lenders, were penalized severely by those in control of the nation. 
Today, charging interest is something that anyone can do. Let's see here a picture of someone who has caused huge problems for the world. John Pierpont Morgan, the famous J.P. Morgan. For example, what is the danger of financing? A person borrows 100 and has to pay back 500 at times. Let's see this slide. Consider this. The dangers of financing. The issue of bank credit is destroying economic life. I have always said that banks need to exist. Capital is important for each person to have. Money represents the wealth of a nation nowadays. With money we are able to buy and make transactions. Imagine a person who is going to the market nowadays with a bag of potatoes on his back to exchange for ten chickens or something like that, as was done in the past. This is an absurdity. So money was created in order to make life easier, to facilitate. But consider well, the human being needs to have capital, each one of us. Money is important but it cannot be ruined with interest rates and speculation. Referring back to the slide, the second point. Bank financing gives all the profit back to the banks. And the person remains enslaved. I've spoken about this on TV and radio for decades and decades. I can't even remember for how many decades. <laughs> That's true. Let's see the third point. Companies lose their work capacity and production through bank financing. Consequences. Increase in the price of products and the companies fall into an illusion. Entrepreneurs have extreme difficulties, especially in Brazil. And why? Because they start purchasing products from China, because the Chinese pay miserable wages to their people. So a product that is worth 10 here, the Chinese sell for one. And this destroys the economy of each and every country. A certain control is needed, because if Brazil only wants to make money from what is supplied from China, this destroys the products made here, and the companies as well. It also ruins the Chinese people, who have to work for free, and is even forced to eat terrible foodstuffs. I'd like for us to now see an interview that was done with Richard. He's an English teacher at Millennium Language School in Brazil, a Canadian. And he says some interesting things about the economy. Well, this is a very serious problem, isn't it? You know, but I think it's very important to see that this is not a problem now. This is a problem that's been happening for 20, 30, 40 years. Something that Dr. Kepi wrote about in this extraordinary book, The Decay of the American People and of the United States. He was trying to show in this book that the decay that's happening in the United States is not only economic, but is something related to education, philosophy, psychology, uh, farming, product productivity, manufacturing. So the problem that we're seeing now, the result we're seeing now, is something that's been happening for a long, long time. And Dr. Kepi was trying to warn the Americans and the world about that in the early 1980s. The problem was we didn't listen. And so we have the crisis that we have today. The result of years and years and years of corruption, of decay, of uh, inverted values, putting money above work, these kinds of things that he talked about and talks about still in his radio programs and TV programs that really offer us solutions to understanding what's going on really, what's really happening inside the situation in the United States and around the world. It's very important work to look at today. I'd like to put up a slide now that shows what our ideals are, which I believe are the ideals of all humanity. The politicians must find the courage needed to enact this. If they want to be elected or re-elected, if they would actually want to achieve social peace, because social peace is possible through only one means, through justice. 
If the people do not have justice because of the socio-economic power that we are experiencing, we simply won't have any tranquility, no peace. We could say that society's big sin has nothing to do with sex, as the clergy has always espoused. Society's greatest problem has always been in relation to money. So let's say then uh, what these ideals are. First, everyone should receive their basic meals free. Second, everyone also should receive free basic clothing. Third, everyone should have free housing. Achieving these ideals will bring peace and well-being for all people. I believe that these ideals put into practice come from the following philosophy. Let's see. Jesus Christ was humanity's greatest philosopher. He said, love thy neighbor as thyself, which is the Christian doctrine, and being tolerant with mistakes expresses the philosophy of forgiveness. Without these positive aspects, humanity won't survive. And here is his picture. And look, if he was a man and God, then he knew what he was talking about. No doubt about it. See you next time. See you.